<laughs> hey guys, I am at the Sapporo Snow Festival today. And would you believe that this festival started with... So did you know that Japan's northern island of Hokkaido has only been inhabited for about 150 years? That, that is so new. And it comes along with it some pretty cool advantages in how they do city planning and everything like that, but we'll touch on that a little later. For now, it is my third day, well the morning of my third day in Hokkaido. Right now, I'm in Sapporo. But getting here was an adventure all of its own. Let's see if I can't summarize it in about two minutes. All right, here we go. So I was in Milan with two shamisen players and I got an email asking me if I wanted to go to Hokkaido. Yes. So instead of going home, I came directly to Hokkaido. Well, not really directly. There were four flights and five airports involved, but who's counting? We landed at night in Asahikawa. There was snow, lots of snow. The next day, we went to a cool design center. The area of Asahikawa itself is known for producing incredible furniture. We had food, and we got to visit some of the furniture makers themselves. And when nighttime hit, we went to the Asahikawa Winter Festival. It was brief, it was cold, it was beautiful. But night, I braved the cold and went out for a little bit, and it was so worth it. It's just around midnight right now. It's currently about minus 12 degrees, so it's not all that bad. But magic is happening right behind me. I kind of wanted to stay out a little bit later and film more for you guys, but my camera is starting to freeze up. The lens more than anything, but she's not doing good. This giant truck filled with snow reminds me, before I head into the hotel, there's something I want to show you. And that's these poles right here, which let cars and snow plows and everything know where the edge of the road is. They're everywhere. And areas that don't have these poles have arrows hanging from above because the poles wouldn't be tall enough because they get that much snow in this area. All right, that, that's all for now. I'm really gonna head back into the hotel. Look at how white my hair is turned. <laughs> All right, I think from this point we can slow down a little bit. So the next day we headed into an area called Otaru and we're pretty much instantly graced with the beauty of snow. These little ledges they have created are to reduce the risk of like, I guess not landslides, but snow slides down the side of that like hill or mountain. That tells you how much snow they get here. No, it's no, like, no, no, we know this guy. Like, we, we see his videos every Tuesday. <laughs> and then he moved over there and he was like, oh, he's trying to get a shot. I don't know, I don't shot. Shot. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming up. Otara was beautiful and I cannot wait to go back there someday, but that pretty much brings us to last night when I arrived here at this hotel. This hotel isn't too bad either. It's got a mountain view. <laughs> Look at that sunset over the mountains there. Oof. I feel like this warrants some kind of time lapse. On my way to the snow festival right now. Sapporo itself is just so beautiful right now. Look at this. Before we actually get to the festival, a little bit of context. This entire festival actually started with kids. As the story goes, it looks like the goal was to turn the snow into something more than just a cold bother. And so they started this annual tradition of building snow castles and stuff like that. And over the years, it gained so much attention that it became the Sapporo Snow Festival that it is today. Something I wanted to tell you guys about right now. So, interesting fact, from the station all the way to the main park, Odori Park, is connected by an underground set of tunnels. I never knew that. I've never been in them, and I kind of want to check them out. Hey. 
Considering how cold Sapporo gets, it makes sense that there's an underground walkway for like the most popular area. And it also makes sense that it is insanely crowded. All the exits seem clearly numbered. And to be honest with you guys, I, I want to enjoy Sapporo, so I'm gonna go back up. I just kind of wanted to show you guys the area. You'll notice that Sapporo also has these poles. The station is back there. It's been like 14 years since I've seen them. And the last time didn't go so well. And I've actually always wanted to come back and see this snow festival. So I'm literally over the top excited. I'm just trying to keep the energy down right now. So as much as all I want to do is hang around and gather just gorgeous b-roll of this snow festival, there's one thing that I've always wanted to do. So let's go this way. first time I came here, by the time I discovered this place, it was too late. This time I got here just in time. Something special about today, I hear that just during the snow festival, they open up the staircase so we can go down by the stair. The cold I can deal with, it's the ice on the stairs that's kind of freaking me out. Anyway, I don't think that a 10 minute montage of me going down the stairs is gonna be the most exciting. That elevator's neat though, I love seeing it. Hi guys. <laughs> so I'm just gonna hurry down and I'll see you guys when I get down there. That was totally worth it. Now I'm really excited to go check out the snow festival itself. In the last video where I showed my footage from Sapporo from 14 years ago, I believe I described Sapporo as being a different kind of amazing. And I think that holds true. The only sad thing is that every single day until today, it's been snowing and it's not snowing at the snow festival. Do you see this behind me? <laughs> it's, it's like a wish. It's like a wish come true. It started snowing. It started snowing. Yeah. Wow. It started snowing. Wow. You want to say hello? Hello. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank See you, you later. It got really bad there for a while, but things are seemingly calming down a bit. It is a snow festival after all, and I asked for the snow. And as you get down to the end of the park, that's where they're working on the smaller statues, but just because they're smaller doesn't mean they skimp on detail by any means. And my hands may be reaching their limit. <laughs> Ended up buying gloves, it, it seemed like a smart choice. Combini time. Ooh, what a day that was. That was a lot of fun. I never thought that when I published that video of my first visit to Sapporo that I would be there two weeks later. And finally, Sapporo, let, let's see if this is even any good. Smells like beer.